Okay, so in this video, um, the other day actually, I was browsing through eBay. And one of the most popular uh, suppliers for rep wrap parts uh, out, shipped out of America, one of them that keeps popping up is Leap 3D. And if you've seen this, they, tell, they sell a ton of like industry standard junk, uh, kind of Chinese clone type E3D V V6s. But then they have another one at a higher price point uh, that is a, it's a J head, it's an all metal uh, V6, E3D V6 hot end, uh, 0 0.4 nozzle, but look at what they're saying here. They're saying it's an all metal and it's a polished heat break, no more jams and it's top quality. So basically they're, they're offering this as a clone, but it's a, it's a quality clone that's made in the USA. So, um, I was really interested and at $35, if it's machined well, and it has the E3D V6 design, which is, I think, open source. That's why everybody's cloning it. Maybe this could be a good deal. And by the way, you know, one thing that you'll notice on it, and we're going to unbox it in a second, is, look at this. They have the same kind of pretty cool thermistor setup that the actual real E3D hot end uses with that set screw that holds in the thermistor. And... Um, down here, they even claim, you can see, it's made in the USA, equipped with pre-assembled modules. So, and then look at, this is a top quality replica of the popular V6. So basically, even compared to their other products that Leap 3D is selling, they're claiming that this one is made in the USA. So I, you know, I had to try this for 35 bucks. Because, you know, it, it's about a third of the cost of what I can get um, uh, ether, a genuine E3D shipped to the US. Okay, so here it is. Um, this was uh, shipped to me with some with a piece of borosilicate. Uh, big, I bought a round borosilicate plate, and this was in there too. So let's take a look first of all at this kind of secondary type of bag real quick, and we'll check it out. So this is the 30 millimeter fan that looks like it, uh, you know, it's kind of clips right on there. It's, uh, let's see, we got a 12 volt 0 0.13 amp for current in case you're wondering. Notice that there's no connector soldered to this, but it has, it does appear to have an exceptionally long lead to it. So I guess that's kind of nice depending on what you need to set up. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of set this here and move on to something else. And in that same bag that the fan came from, we have a, let me see from the specs. Yeah, it looks like a 40 watt, 12 volt, 40 watt heater cartridge. And the leads appear to be, I'm putting it up against it. Yeah, the leads are about a meter long. So about one meter long leads on those. Could be interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at the made in the USA clone. All right, so it is a Bowden setup, but I think it's universal. You can kind of go either way with it. There's a lot of the E3D setups nowadays, what people are doing even on the direct feed, they're sticking the Bowden tube in there and then they're just having like a stub stick out. And then they're putting it all the way up as close as possible to the filament drive gear so that they can, um, so they don't have a lot of flex possible with some of your flexible filaments. There's not a lot of stuff to wiggle around. But you do have the, I believe it's called a PC4 or PC6 connector. I don't remember, but it's a Bowden connector. And it looks like they've also included a hex wrench. Yay, another hex wrench to put in your toolkit. But who knows, I mean, I, I have these everywhere and I still look for them. So anyways, um, we've got the Bowden connector, the, the hex wrench, the fan and the heater cartridge. And moving on, now we're getting closer. Oh, and our PTFE tube. By the way, let's take a look at this. Uh, about a meter long on the PTFE tube also. Some of that's gonna be pushed down into here because I think the, the PTFE tube goes not all the way to the melt zone, but it goes down pretty far. So you're gonna lose a few inches, but not much. All right, let's take a look now. Uh, Rep Rap Champion, Semitech. It's the 104 GT2. Uh, this is actually in Marlin. You can find that in the firmware uh, thermistor table that's built in with it. Um, so let's take a look here. 
Oh, by the way, it says, hey, here's a firmware configuration guide. Haven't followed that link yet, but you can see that they include that. All right, so let's take a look. We have, it looks like we have our thermistor right there all the way at the end. You can barely see it. Let me hold this up and let it focus for a second. Hopefully that'll work. I don't know if this shot works or not. So there's our thermistor. And then it has a connector really close, which of course is gonna plug into this. And then from there, let's measure that again. Yep, about, a, about another meter. So you got an, about a meter. And this is gonna click onto the thermistor board on your printer controller. Okay, so now we're done with the thermistor. I'm actually gonna put this back in the bag to protect that, uh, be that bead of, I think it's glass or something like that on the end of the thermistor. And finally, let's just take a look at this. Wow, so I'm used to dealing with the E3DV5 clones. This just seems significantly smaller to me. So it's more a lot more compact than what I'm used to already. So you can take a look. It's got one of some of the black oxide screws, some real quality screws there. And it has, what's really cool is, is it actually, instead of just putting it in and setting it with a set screw, it actually has a clamping block like the real one actually has, right? Unlike, again, stressing it again, unlike a lot of the Chinese clones. And then, you know, of course, thermistor goes in here, right? So you hook this up, wedge the thermistor, there's a little hole drilled in there that's kind of semi-exposed, and this holds it in place. I'm a lot more comfortable with that type of solution than the good old, you know, wrapping it with a bunch of Captain tape and like crossing your fingers, right? So. Not too bad. So altogether, let's take another look at everything. I'll kind of try to spread it out a bit. I'm not a pro at unboxing videos, so if this sucks, please comment. Tell me how I can get better though, instead of just trashing it. Actually trash it if you want to, I don't care, it's cool. Uh, but <laughs> here's some of the gear. And I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hey, in the future, after I've ran some prints with this, what's really everybody, I think what everybody, the big question isn't so much, what does the boxing look like? What everybody wants to know about is what's the print quality like? How is it going? Is it jamming all the time? Is the bore really smooth? You know, and stuff like that. And um, in the future, I will post a video like that. And one thing I didn't look is I have a 0 0.4 nozzle. Uh, looks like it needs to be tightened up a bit, but you can also take a look inside of here. I almost didn't do that, didn't See, I, I suck at unboxing videos. Let's take a look. You can see the extent to which that actually goes into about right there so it's gonna it's gonna run all the way through here and go down and it's gonna bottom out about right here so you can see that it's basically from the threads down you have all that safe space <laughs> you have all that safe space to um, protect the PTFE from the high temperatures of the all-metal auto